Hi, I'm Katherine Upton, group publisher of eLearning Magazine Group, and I'm welcoming Yvonne Simon, Chief Learning Architect for Southern New Hampshire University's Innovation Lab. Welcome, Yvonne. Hello. Yvonne Simon is Chief Learning Architect and founding member, member of the Innovation Lab, a division of Southern New Hampshire University charged with reducing costs, increasing access, and providing transformational educational experiences for underserved students. In this role, she is responsible for the development and delivery of a highly scalable competency-based model capable of disrupting the current online business. That <laughs> sounds like you just wreak some havoc. <laughs> <laughs> if I do my job well, well yes, yes, I will yes, you do. do. Yep. Yes, you do. Um, Southwest, Southern New Hampshire University was named uh, the 12th most innovative company in the U.S. by Fast Company. So why don't you tell us what makes your organization so innovative? Our organization is said to have innovation in its DNA. We're a tuition-driven institution. We're private. And we have been a scrappy organization from the get-go. And that's everything from our humble origins above a fruit stand in Manchester, New Hampshire, <laughs> New Hampshire yeah. to having a innovative third-year program, three years for a bachelor's degree starting in 1985, way ahead of the current trend. And now we are also um, moving into the iLab space, which is a completely different initiative for us. This follows what we did in the online Mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. um, we started online back in 1996 when people didn't know what that was, wow. partnering with a Navy partner. And now this innovation lab is, as you just described, tasked with disrupting our current online business. So how do you go about doing that? Um, I think the keys there are great support, great leadership. President LeBlanc, LeBlanc from the very beginning has said, here's your charter. Go and do this. Get it done great team members. In mm -hmm. addition to myself, we have a wonderful executive director, an assessment lead, a technology lead, and a mm -hmm. business partner development lead. And we're bringing on new talent all the time. So as anyone knows, that's the key to, to making that happen. Mm -hmm. The innovation itself, I think, is really turning higher ed upside down. We looked at everything. We've looked at cost. We've looked at the traditional instructor role. We have no traditional instructors in our mm -hmm. model. Really? We have no courses. Wow. Um, we have blown it all up so that it is user-centric and so that it's in partnership with our business and city partners. So explain to me then, as a student uh, mm -hmm. through your program, what would I enroll for? How right. would I decide what to take? That's, that's driving our registrar crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but basically, you enroll in the program. Mm -hmm. And you enroll to achieve your goals as a student. And each student develops his or her own personalized mastery plan. Wow. So they get to choose the tasks that they want to engage in. They have to master all the 120 competencies in the program, okay. but they can do it through the tasks that they choose. Right. And they start where they are. That's the other really important point about this. So if let's say writing hasn't been your bag, you right. never thought you did well in that, you could start by writing a paragraph. Oh, wow. And then we use a little gamification. We wow. say, start with what you can do, what seems manageable. And then we notch it up, we level it up. So then you go into your next challenge and your next challenge after that. So you get to the associate's level work mm -hmm. that is required for our graduates. Wow, that sounds very interesting. Now at the Enterprise Learning Conference and Expo today, you just finished a session on innovators in learning. It sounds like a perfect match. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you uh, think are the top three takeaways from that session that you just completed. I was very heartened, I have to say. Um, the co-panelists um, were from very different entities, organizations, um, Cisco and the Heart University. Ameri it's American Heart yeah. University. Yes, is that American Heart Association University. University. Yeah. yeah, and what I was really blown away with by the touch points that we all share and what drives us all, we're really all thinking about the whole person and the whole world and how do all these pieces come together. I think the day when university is over here and business is over here and nonprofit is over here, we're really trying to open up those barriers and connect. It's all about the connection, what Cisco talked about as far as leveraging the social capital that we all have. I mean, that's what it's all about, having those great conversations and people really investing in having the best lives that they can. And I was just really blown away by how much we're all 
we're all in that together. Sure. Coming at from different perspectives, but in it together. So what did you learn from some of the other speakers? You were talking about Cisco socializing the, the mm -hmm. learning experience. What are some of the other lessons you, you think people can walk away from from that session? Well, I think that we all bring something to the table, just like individuals all bring mm -hmm, something mm -hmm, to the table. Mm -hmm. Organizations all bring something yep. to, the together, yep. so, to the table. So an institution of higher ed is, you know, we have the privilege of being focused on learning all the time, oh, all yeah. day long. You know, that's what we do. That's our business, if yeah. you will. Um, whereas an institution like Cisco has to worry about technology and product and sales and um, but the dynamic that's created between different organizations is really what makes learning and living very exciting. Mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. if students have to be isolated in their learning and just be reading and regurgitating, I know there are many better <laughs> models out there, I think, and there are fabulous teachers doing very interesting work mm -hmm. all over the place. Mm -hmm. But what we're really trying to do is personalization at scale. Right, right. We were um, recently awarded an Educause Next Gen Learning Challenge Award, wow. and they called us high risk, high reward. Wow. Um, maybe not a surprise if you've been listening, but I think the reason is that we really are trying to put the student in the driver's seat mm -hmm. and really tap the peer to peer community, mm -hmm. the mentor community. Mm -hmm. And that's really going out on a limb mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, from some people's perspective. But I think if you understand learning and how it works and how people build connections mm -hmm. and relationships, it's kind of the heart of the solution. So what kind of technologies are you using to drive this? Because this is totally different mm -hmm. than what's sitting in the campus right now. Yeah, that's, I, that's the making the other people nuts part you were referring to. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, I love what Jean said from mm -hmm. Cisco. She just said, don't let the technology get in your way. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. can start very small and build systems mm -hmm. to de develop whatever kind of network your learners need. I'd like to just jump on their Cisco systems, however, yeah. uh -huh. if she'd let me do that. <laughs> um, that would be great. But in the meantime, we're our director of technology is looking at lots of different types of solutions, mm -hmm. building it right up from Salesforce, for example, mm -hmm. oh, okay. and not going into the LMS model. So I think there's a lot of different ways you can get this done, and I think it just depends, again, on all the, the restraints and Great. time to market. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Yvonne. And if you haven't seen uh, the session Innovators in Learning featuring Southern New Hampshire University, Learning at Cisco, and the American Heart Association University, their session is recorded and going to webcast at the Enterprise Learning Conference and Expo virtual event on November 8th. To register for that, you can go to www.elceshow.com. And for those of you that didn't join us this year in Irvine, California, we invite you to join us next year at the Enterprise Learning Conference uh, in Anaheim, California at the Convention Center. And that will occur August 26th through the 28th. And you can also access information at www.elceshow.com backslash 2013. Thank you for joining us, Yvonne. Thank you very much. Okay. Pleasure to be here.